Hello and welcome to the task imported chopper. In this task, we finally import our uh, chopper that we did in the Blender practice session into a 3GS uh, application. To do that, we have to first uh, export uh, the choppers into uh, appropriate file formats. For example, object file plus MTL, where object file holds the geometry and MTL holds the material, or into the collada. Uh, which holds both at the same time. We are also importing a uh, marine into our scene where it will uh, walk around and it will be animated. And the marine is uh, available on this uh, on this URL. Now if we look at the chopper that we uh, modeled in the Blender practice session, we see that the chopper is not just one mesh. The chopper consists of uh, the main node, the chopper, then we have the blades, and the blades have two children, blade 1 and blade 2. So we see that uh, one blade uh, is uh, under the blade 1, and the other blade is under the blade 2. And you also have the body. So it, it's exactly the same uh, hierarchy that we used in the cube chopper task. Now let's uh, look at the code. We see that uh, we are importing the bridges, but now we're also importing different loaders here for uh, loading uh, all those files into our, uh, into our scene. We also see that we have the chopper files here, so we have the MTL and object files here, but also the Colada, Colada file. And uh, those are the default chopper that uh, is uh, given here, but uh, if you have your own chopper, then please uh, replace those files with your own uh, chopper files. We also have the keyboard state uh, 3GS extension here that we will use to uh, move the uh, marine around the scene. But uh, let's continue. So uh, first we have the chopper uh, object and chopper collata. So we will have two choppers in our scene. And also we have the marine uh, variable, which holds the marine from the GLDF file. Then we have the number of assets to load. So currently it's set to one because we uh, load at the end, we load the uh, wall texture too. This wall texture makes the uh, floor uh, this uh, interesting color here. So uh, we'll see that later. If we look at the uh, server currently, we see that there are uh, some uh, uncaught uh, reference errors where the mixer is not defined. So uh, to fix that, we first should uh, go to the source of the error, which is here. And uh, we can currently comment these uh, out. Uh, we will later see how can we get the mixer here and uh, update it uh, according to the time and specify the animations. But when we have uh, commented this uh, out, uh, we see that there's this uh, empty scene. So those are the walls of the hangar. And uh, if we uh, change the camera position, so currently it's uh, zero, but when we change it to like uh, 20 units away, then we see that this uh, hangar here with the custom floor. Next, we also have the texture loader that is used to load the uh, floor texture. Then we have the light trajectory and light, as uh, we have seen in previous tasks already. Then we have a clock, we have the keyboard states, and then we have the speed of the marine. And uh, this will be changed by the arrow keys, and we see later how that can be uh, used to move the marine. Then we have the status container, uh, this will be uh, the contents here. So uh, running means that we are running the program, but uh, if I, for example, change the assets to load to do, then I say that it's loading. So uh, uh, this says it's loading when the loading has not been done yet. So currently we only have one asset, so we are running. Then uh, we have our regular functions here. We have the camera definition, we have light trajectory definition, and also we have some directional light here. And uh, then we have the hangar, and then we have uh, three sections here. We have to load the uh, two chopper, choppers and one marine. So let's uh, let's start with the object chopper first. So let's see what we have to do first. We have to load the MTL file with the MTL loader. So we see that uh, at the beginning we are loading the MTL loader here. So we can use it in our code now. And let's uh, save it into a variable MTL loader. And that equals a new MTL loader. 
So uh, now we want to load the the MTL file, which is here, the chopper that MTL with our MTL loader. So to do that, we use the load function. So MTL loader that loads, and uh, this takes uh, two arguments. First is the path to our uh, uh, load uh, MTL file. So chopper .mtl. And the second file is the uh, callback that will be used uh, when the loading has been done. So let's create a new function. And the argument is the material that has been loaded. And then we create the function body. And uh, let's first uh, log the material and see if, if it even exists. So if I go to the terminal, then I see that this loads. Oh, there is this uh, material creator. So we can see that it actually exists. So, and the next thing that we have to do on the loader callback of the entire loader, load the object uh, file with the object loader. So let's create a new new loader as well. So the object loader. And we imported that as well from the uh, 3GS add-ons. So then next thing that we have to do is specify the material that the object file that we are loading will use and we want to set it to this uh, mat that uh, the function uh, will take as an argument so let's go to the documentation of this object loader and uh, documentation so object loader and it's here so let's see how how can we specify the uh, material. So the set materials here, we have to use this um, method and this will uh, take in an argument the MTL loader that material creator, which is exactly what uh, we have in the met. So object loader that sets material. Uh, these are materials with the plural. And then uh, we set it to the met. And the next thing we have to do is we have to load the object file, which is exactly the same as with the MTL file. So object loader that loads, set the path to the object file. So it's chopper that object. And uh, now instead of creating an uh, anonymous function for it, we already have a function here. So load chopper uh, object file. And when everything goes well, then we should see a chopper here, so uh, we can print it out console log chopper. And when we go here, we uh, see that uh, the chopper is a group and it has three children. Uh, so it has the mesh with the name blade one, a mesh with the blade two, and a mesh with the name body. So uh, clearly those uh, plate one and plate two are not uh, in a hierarchical order that we want them to be. So that's what we have to do next in this uh, function. So uh, it does not uh, store object hierarchy. So now we have to take all the parts uh, and store them into variables, uh, remove them from the chopper uh, and then add them back as a hierarchy. So we can do that. So here I'm currently in the object 3D uh, documentation, which is inherited by the group. And we see that there is this method called get object by name, uh, which is a the name is the string to match to the children's uh, name property. And we saw here that the meshes, the children, those name properties are blade one, blade two, and uh, body. So we can use this uh, method get object by name. And we can do that. So chopper get object by name and then the name is played on. And we can con uh, continue with the other children as well. And we also have to uh, store them into variables. So play one. We can do that same here. Play two, and here we have to do property. And uh, then I want to remove them from the chopper, so 
chop pärg saata remove blade 1, blade 2 and body so let's uh, see now and now there are no children for the choppers, it's just an empty group but uh, we can uh, re rebuild it, so chopper uh, let's, let's first create the group for the uh, blades as well so blades new and we want it to be a group as well then we add the blades to the blades group blade one and plate two and then we want to add the body and plates to the chopper so mm, body and now if we look at the group we have two children for it we have the body and then we have a group with which doesn't have a name and this group has two uh, children here, plate one and plate two. You can also uh, add the name to the plates as well. So and uh, our plate is not defined. It has to be plates with plural. So now the children have uh, both the names. So plate one uh, plates has a uh, name plates, and the body mesh has the name body. So that is done. So next we have to change the whole chopper a bit because the chopper might be too big. So we can actually add the chopper to the scene first and see how it looks like. Uh, add chopper. And we see that this uh, the rotation is wrong and it's a bit too big maybe. So first let's uh, rotate it. So the chopper. Need to set it, and we want it to rotate on the y axis. So uh, 90 degrees, which is uh, we had, we can use the ra to rad function. So now we see that the tail might be uh, clipping to the to the uh, wall. So let's uh, scale the whole chopper down so it doesn't happen. And uh, we scale it down by 20%. And we can see the whole plate is now in that angle. Mm. We can also position the chopper 10 units down the y axis. So let's do this. Position set and the y axis is on the second. So uh, 10, uh, 10 units down, so that's minus 10. And we can see that the chopper is now on the ground. And the light trajectory is also uh, moving the light, so the lighting also changes a bit. So that's how uh, the uh, object file was loaded. Uh, I can leave you the Collada loading as an independent task, but uh, let's now uh, load the Marine as well. The Marine is the GLTF uh, file. Uh, Compared to the choppers, the marine is on the uh, remote server, specifically the CGLearn uh, files uh, directory. And for that, we have to uh, do a bit differently. We have to set the cross storage into anonymous. But first, let's create the GLTF uh, loader. So. New GLTF loader. So let's first create, well, uh, set it to the anonymous. And next we have to load the uh, file. We can do that. So the load. And this is the URL. And we also have the function for the marine, so the load marine function here. And uh, this uh, already has a texture inside it, so we can actually look at it uh, on the website. Uh, here, it's a bit uh, looks a bit strange uh, because uh, 
the UV wrapping has been uh, done on it. So, for example, you can see the closed eyes uh, uh, face here, but the animations uh, can open those eyes and the eye pictures are here where they fit as well. And we can also see some teeth and the camo. More teeth, I guess this is a tongue. And uh, yeah, this, this texture will be uh, put on the marine uh, mesh. We can see that later as well, but well, right now. And uh, we, if we load the load the marine, let's uh, first see what is actually been loaded. So let's uh, print the GLTF uh, file out uh, with the uh, log function, and we can see that the it's uh, a scene. So it's a group, it has an array of uh, scenes with uh, one scene in it and it has uh, animations, so it has three animations, it has uh, idle animation, it has walk animation, I can actually zoom in, uh, and the run animation and it, those are different uh, durations each, so idle has a duration 4 seconds, walk has 1 second and run has uh, 0.7 seconds. It also has the uh, mesh inside of it, so this is a group here and uh, this uh, group has children, which is the skinned mesh, so that's the, that's the mesh that we uh, want to uh, actually use. So find out where the load that the marine's mesh is, so then assign to the marine variable, so we saw that this is here, so the scenes and the first ch child, so marine is the GLTF scenes, uh, so the first scene, it's a zero, and scenes, and the first one is the group, we don't, I think we don't want the group, we want the skinned mesh, so uh, let's take the first child, and The minus mesh is type of skin mesh, yeah, so we want the skin mesh. So uh, the skin mesh means that the geometry is like the skeleton of the uh, of the uh, of the mesh. So next thing we have to do is set the marine uh, attribute name. Uh, so marine and uh, name. And that we will set to the marine. So let me first uh, give you the brief overview of how these uh, animations and what are the me skinned meshes and how do these things specifically work. So uh, if we have uh, uh, three animations, for example we had the uh, idle uh, walk and then we also had the run then each of these are uh, a series of transformations on the mesh and those transformations have those uh, keyframes those are the fixed points so for example uh, idle might have uh, three three uh, keyframes well every animation might have three keyframes and what the animation is, is just an interpolation between those three keyframes. So for example, uh, this might be two second animation and we want the animation states on the 1.5 seconds. And how do we get this? We take uh, 50, well, uh, this part here, so it's this, uh, might be uh, some uh, distance x and this might be some distance y and how do we get the transformation at the 1.5 second is we take the uh, x over x plus y and then multiply it with the keyframe 1 so the k1 this be k1 and then we at y over x plus y times k2. So the k2 is the second keyframe. And so how the animation works is at each frame we take the progression of the animation 
so how much time has passed since the start of the animation, for example, 1.5 seconds in this example, and then we interpolate between the uh, uh, the first keyframe that is behind it and the first keyframe that is next to it, uh, well, after it. And then uh, at each uh, time, we can calculate the uh, combination of these uh, states, and then we get the the animation. And what are those uh, states of animation specifically? So if we think about a uh, marine, so it's a very simplified uh, man here, then uh, this marine has a skeleton. So uh, the skeleton might have some uh, root nodes, and then from root nodes we have uh, bones. And uh, the idea is that the root bone is uh, the center of the local space of the marine. And uh, when we want to move those bones around, for example, uh, this bone here, then this bone, uh, the movement of this bone will uh, affect the uh, location of those uh, vertices around here. For, for example, those hand vertices uh, here or here or here. And how can this be done is we uh, start from the root nodes and then we apply the uh, relative transformation uh, of each uh, each of the bones. So for example, we have the root here and then we have the first bone here, so one, and the second bone here, two. When we have those two bones, we multiply those uh, matrices together, those uh, transformation matrices, and uh, we get this uh, a, a bone matrix, let's call it. so bone matrix and we just uh, multiply the local uh, space coordinates with it so the, the position and then uh, when we have uh, calculated this uh, transformation then we uh, do the regular things like uh, the model view matrix and uh, the projection matrix so we apply the regular uh, model matrix the view matrix and the projection matrix and then we uh, carry this, this information to the fragment shader and we get in there. And uh, this uh, bone matrix multiplication, multiplication is done very easily, uh, it's, an, it's done in the vertex shader and uh, it's very fast, so uh, we would think that this tree structure here uh, would be uh, quite uh, difficult to uh, do all those things very fast, but it's uh, actually quite fast. And the attachment of the uh, vertices of the hand, for example, or the leg, is done uh, by the process of rigging. So, for example, this uh, this vertex here uh, might be uh, uh, eighty percent of uh, bone uh, five. So this is the five, and this is six, and twenty percent of bone six. And uh, when we calculate the bone matrix, then we just take 80% uh, influence from the transformation of the bone 5 and 20% uh, of the bone 6. Then, uh, then we have to load the, the animation. So first we have to find out where the animations are uh, held. We see here that the animations are uh, right here. Uh, 0, 1 and 2, so the animations is an array of 3. Uh, we can get the animations, so uh, animations is the gltf dot animations and add them to the marine object under an animations attribute, so marine animations so let's add and animations. So we have uh, three, three animations, so we have to do it uh, three times. The combining of the animations is done by the animation mixer in 3GS. So we have to create the 3 3GS uh, uh, animation mixer, uh, provide it uh, the uh, machine uh, skinned mesh. And then we have to assign it to the marine uh, 
Marine's uh, attribute. Uh, so uh, in JavaScript, we can add uh, as many attributes uh, to link runtime as we want. So we can just add uh, animation mixer uh, attribute to the Marine itself. Okay, so first, uh, let's create the attributes. So animation uh, mixer. Then uh, let's create the animation mix mixer itself. Mixer. And we have to give it the marine. So let's uh, see if it works. Marine animation is, is not a function. So we can see the uh, skin mesh uh, the animations properties and array. So what we have to do is we have to use uh, the push function it's instead of add. And uh, now the other has gone away. So next we have to configure the uh, animation mixer, mixer itself. So we see that loop through the animation clip objects. So those are the animation uh, animations uh, in the uh, GLTF. And use the created mixers clip action and give the action itself as an argument. What we have to do is set the clips to the mixer as actions and then set all the clips to play as well. So uh, first let's marine, let's do the 5.1, marine animation mixer and set action, uh, clip action is here. And we have the anim action here. Let's see what this uh, method returns. So uh, x and console log. So we see that this returns, uh, returns the animation action. And uh, we can use the animation action to play it. So x action, let's uh, rename it as an action and uh, play. Is not. So uh, yeah, everything should work now. So the next step is we have to scale the marine down because uh, the uh, units in Fridges and Blender are different. So what we can do is uh, set the scale to uh, something very small. So 0 0.015 is uh, suggested here. And then we have to set the position as well to 0, minus 10, and 80. So let's do that as well. 0, so minus 10 is uh, on the floor. And uh, let's uh, not put it at minus, uh, at 80 now. So we can see it. Uh, let's maybe move it closer. Oh yeah, we also have to add the marine to our scene as well. Scene add uh, marine. Uh, still can't see it. So it still might be far away. So we can see it now at the bottom of, of our screen. Uh, we can actually uh, move the camera further away. So uh, let's this be like uh, 30. And here, uh, let's uh, move it uh, closer to the ground as well. Uh, let's move it closer, 20, can be even closer, 15. So now, yeah, now we can see the marine on the ground, it's in the T-pose currently. Maybe we can change that. Uh, so that should be done with the marine. Uh, also, uh, you should change the assets to load uh, variable as well. So then we have loaded the chopper and the marine as well, so this should be three. Uh, should be four actually in the end because you will also load the colada chopper, but the three currently because we want to debug. So now we will come to the update marine uh, animation blend function, and uh, this is where we actually combine the uh, idling, walking, and running animations together, uh, so the animation uh, transitions are smooth. So currently uh, we have the uh, run set to one and idle and walk to zero. So we can also uh, come back to this uh, commented out uh, uh, code. 
and so we can fix it we can just uh, get the mixer at the beginning of the function so our mixer and this is the uh, animation mixer that we saved into the marine so everything works when we hit the F12 uh, nothing is wrong but nothing works either so uh, let's uh, update the time that the animation is taking so uh, that can be done by updating the mixer by giving the delta time to it so now uh, since the run is the one uh, we should see that the soldier is uh, running and indeed it uh, has the running running animation if I change it to everything is equal then it uh, looks a bit strange uh, this is because the animation lengths are different so we have to normalize the length uh, as well but uh, first let's let's uh, get it to zero by default so we can see that the, if the speed is between zero and four then we should have some combination of idle walk and run but if the speed is uh, greater than four then we just uh, do the run and uh, how, do, how do we combine these? We will use the Bernstein uh, uh, polynomials. So let's uh, look at these uh, Bernstein uh, polynomials. And uh, the idea of this Bernstein polynomial is uh, to mix uh, one or more different variables together so that the uh, transition between the uh, range is smooth. So we can see that uh, when we have only one variable, then we just use that one variable. When we have two variables, then this uh, linear combination, uh, the linear interpolation that we have been using before. So one is one minus x, and then the other one is x. So the x is uh, a variable, uh, a parameter that uh, moves from zero to one. And uh, when we have three parameters, that's, that's what we are interested in. Uh, we have these uh, three polynomials here, and uh, those polynomials are 1 minus x uh, squared, 2x times 1 minus x, and x squared. And uh, for example, this picture, we see that uh, those are the curves for, what is it, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 5 variables. And uh, the orange line here is the sum of all the curves. We can see that it's 1. So uh, all the sum of all those uh, uh, polynomials will always be 1 which is exactly what we want because we want this to be a we want this to be the uh, linear combination okay so we want this x somehow so the x goes from 0 to 1 uh, but we have speed which goes from 0 to 4 so we can use this instead so x is a speed and we have to normalize it so we just divide by 4 because the minimum value is zero, and zero by uh, zero divided by four is zero, and the maximum value is uh, almost four, uh, which is uh, four divided by four is one. So this x will be between zero and one. And then we can uh, assign the weights by the polynomials. So the first polynomial was one uh, one minus x squared. So meh power uh, 1 minus x and to the power of 2 then we have the walk and that will be the 2x uh, to, uh, multiplied by 1 minus x 2 times x times 1 minus x and then we have the running weight which will be x squared. So the run is just math oh, x squared. And uh, let's see if I made any errors. So uh, no errors. So those, those should be the uh, variables. And we can actually see that the soldier has stopped, uh, stopped uh, running. And the uh, arrow keys don't do anything either. So if I set the speed to 2, then we 
then it's uh, it's still a bit weird. So let's uh, debug this. So uh, we saw that we want to uh, set the time scale. So we see that the uh, animation lengths are different, and we want the lengths to be the same. So we see the norm length here. We can calculate it by using the weights as well. So length, and this will be the uh, weight of the idle times the idle length. Then, uh, then we use the length, uh, weight of the walk, and then the walk length. And then we use the weight of the run uh, times run length. So this normal length should be the uh, value uh, ah, norm length. Uh, this uh, norm length should be the uh, value of the length that the animation actually should take. And uh, if you follow these commands further, then you will actually uh, fix this bug. And uh, the important thing is that when you move the soldier around, so that's when you uh, will implement this update marine position, uh, it's important that the feet don't slide on the ground. So that means that uh, when the soldier is very fast, then the animation should be also faster. The other thing to note is that the camera should also follow the marine around, uh, like a third, third person camera. So we can uh, see that the marine here is in the different positions and the camera is always behind behind the marine. And the camera should like uh, look at some, some position in front of the marine or the marine itself. But it should uh, look uh, something that is like uh, a video game. And uh, finally, in the draw function, uh, there is this uh, task as well that uh, you should uh, rotate the place of the choppers. So remember, we have two choppers this time. We have the object chopper and we have the collider chopper. So those should be uh, animated as well. And uh, when you have done all those tasks, then you should have uh, finished this uh, week's uh, practice session task. So good luck.